All righty. Uh, hey, everybody. We'll let uh, everyone start to, to join here and give people 30 seconds, a minute or so to uh, get started. And while we're doing that, I'm going to hurry and enable the chat so everyone can type in where you're, you're tuning in from. Um, and I'll go ahead and repost that Jay so that everyone can see it. Yep. That was just to, to me and Bracken. Um, awesome. So I'll repost that. Let everyone have a second to come in. I love it. Hey, Kathy. Um, give everyone a couple more minutes here. And as we see that, that attendance uh, slow down as everyone filters in, we'll, we'll go ahead and get started here in just a second. And while, while we're waiting, a um, couple of things is chat is enabled. So as you come in, feel free to drop in where you're tuning in from. Uh, as we go through this, don't hesitate to drop a, a question in the chat or a comment as well as in the Q&A. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to drop those in there as well. Uh, and we'll try and answer those either as we're going through the topic um, or if we, we can't get to it right then and we keep going, we'll make sure and answer those questions at the end. Um, and it looks like we're giving everybody a minute here. So I think we're good to go ahead and get started. Uh, so super excited to have this conversation today about how we can use our time right now, use Q4, uh, make sure that we are prepped and ready for uh, the new year. And to have this conversation, I'm, I'm really, really excited to have Jay Carter here from uh, Profit for Contractors. And not only is Jay uh, one of the main guys over there at, at PFC, but he also owns and operates his own uh, roofing company. So comes from the industry uh, while also working with uh, contractors every day, helping them improve their business, become more profitable through uh, PFC. So uh, Jay, pumped to have you here and I'll, uh, I'll let you take it over from here. All right, awesome. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for having me. And I'm glad to talk to everybody today and give you some insight on planning for Q4. Now, before I kick this thing off, um, I want uh, in the chat box here, I've given you guys some resources. Uh, first being, uh, you'll see a Google Drive folder um, that's going to have a PDF. In that PDF is a 90 day planning session for busy, busy members. Okay. And we're going to be going through this. We're going to go through this together today. So please uh, grab that resource um, and we'll, uh, we'll jump right into this. So um, in terms of planning for Q4, um, I've always had the, uh, the philosophy or the, the, the practice of looking at everything in 90 day terms. Okay. So when we think about the new year, you know, we're roughly about, you know, we'll say a little bit over a little bit more than 90 days, but we want to, if we're planning for a successful Q4, now's the time to actually put those plans in motion. Now's the time to get the stuff out of your head, get that, you know, start, start decluttering. Okay. And really think about how is your business going to be better or more, you know, how, how are things going to be improved in 90 days? Okay, what are you going to do? What action steps are we going to do? Um, and what do we what do we have as low hanging fruit that we can really look at and, um, you know, be able to take advantage of so that when we get to Q4 um, and, and moving into the new year, um, we're, we're already starting on the right momentum. Okay. And one of the most important things, guys, and I know it sounds um, it, it might as a contractor, you know, we're always, uh, we're always use our hands and we're always, you know, um, you know, doing things and getting things done. Um, but there's a lot to go into, you know, actually writing things down. All right. I learned a little while ago, uh, just in my own business and, and going through my own experiences that if I don't write it down, it's not real. Okay. It's not going to happen. It's a thought, it's an idea. Um, and it, it's unbelievable what happens when you start to write things down, um, and put them in an order that you understand them. Um, plenty of times I've written, you know, plans down um, and, you know, put them away in a, in, a, in a desk somewhere. And lo and behold, in 90 days, bam, I've done all of these things. Okay. It, it, there's a lot of power that making something real. So today we're going to be looking at a plan where I am going to want you to write things down. Um, not so much on this, on this call. Um, this is something that in order to get the best benefit from it, um, 
you're going to have to take some time when you're totally present, okay, um, to really get the benefits from this planning. Now, we're still going to go through the framework and how to use it, um, but I'd like to really suggest that you find yourself in a place where you have no cell phones, no distractions, and where you can be actually present, all right? Too many times when we try to do planning, um, we're either thinking of things that we have to do, you know, we've got the phones going off, everything else, and it immediately puts you into a state of anxiety, all right? Very little creative and um, planning can be done in the state of anxiety, all right? The other side of that is, you know, we've, uh, we're really kind of down on ourselves for not getting this stuff done, um, and that puts us in a state of depression. We don't want to go there either. We want to try to be bang right in the middle in a state of present, okay? Um, the only way to become present, again, sometimes I do this stuff on a Saturday where, you know, nobody's around. I don't have any distractions. I'm not thinking about work, okay, to get the full effect from, uh, from, from doing this exercise. Now, today we're going to go through the framework itself. Um, so let me share my screen. Hopefully this is, everybody can see it. Yep. Um, and first step to any plan is we got to reflect. We got to think about um, what we did right, what we did wrong, um, you know, what went well, what do we want, uh, you know, what, what did we see as a success, okay? Where was the growth, all right? We got to give ourselves some credit as well. Um, again, if you're beating yourself up all the time about all the things that you haven't done or that, you know, the things that didn't work out the way you wanted it, um, what kind of state of mind do you put yourself in? <laughs> put yourself in a state of depression, right? You're, 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 you're thinking in the past. You're thinking too much of, um, you know, negative things that have happened to you. We want to really, you know, put ourselves in this neutral position. And we want to, you know, take some credit for some things that we've done. We, you know, what, did, what wins did we have, right? And those small wins, they count, okay? Small wins, um, you know, let's get those out of our head. Let's get them down and give ourselves some credit. Where was the growth? Which, what lessons did we learn this year, all right? Too many times we miss the lessons that, uh, that can prevent us from making the same mistakes, right? We, and then we're doomed to continuously make the same mistakes. So we want to really get that, again, out of our heads, out onto some paper so that we can, we can start this process off in a very positive way. And one thing, and I don't know if this works for you as well, Jay, but one thing, and I, I've heard it from others, and I, I'll do it even, is uh, when I try and, and either reflect or, or plan or, or go, okay, what are we going to do next? I mm -hmm. like to pick different times of day to do it a couple of times because, right. at least for me, my, my whole perspective changes based on time of day. So like you said, <laughs> trying to stay away from anxiety, depression, mm -hmm. uh, but also saying like, okay, I want to I I take some time early in the morning right when I wake up. Cause for me, at least that's when I feel ready to go. I feel like mm -hmm. I'm ready to take on the day. I'm ready to crush it. And then, uh, I also like to do it at like 10 o'clock at night. Cause yep. then it's, that's typically where I'm slowed down. I'm like, I'm tired of everything. Uh, I'm done. And, and I right. think in them, in the middle somewhere is, is where I can get a really good look at what should I, what should I be doing? What, where, what are you, where are we failing? Where can we improve? Mm -hmm. Um, where for me, I love, I love to try and switch it up a little bit there as well. Absolutely. You know, the, one of the other methods that I've used uh, in the past is I get somebody to read it back to me, mm -hmm. see if that plan still makes sense. Right. Um, again, perspective is, is everything when it comes to planning and, and knowing that, you know, putting yourself in that position where you're preparing yourself to get this plan out, to, like, we're, we're, you know, too many times we think of planning as this, you know, big, ordeal in this long exercise and it doesn't have to be right it's a very uh it's a very empowering thing as well right like i said a lot of contractors uh, most of the contractors we see um are uh you know they don't do this stuff right they're planning jobs they're planning projects but they're not planning their business and that's you know again that that that's almost you know guaranteeing you're going to get back into the same position that you were from the year before so this is about breaking some of those habits um, and again, take the time and it deserves, like we're talking about your business here. We're talking about, um, you know, the future and, and again, one year, three months, like everything's in 90 day cycles, a lot can change and a lot can improve in 90 days. Um, we've seen it complete transformations. And a lot of the time it starts with getting a plan in place and getting these things that you already know, and that are swishing around in your head out onto paper, getting a clear plan in place. And then. After that, we can just follow through with the actions, right? Yep. So <clears throat> another place we want to look is, is looking forward, okay? So, you know, a lot of times when we're in, um, in a planning stage, we've got a lot of tension. 
we got a lot of, you know, unfinished business, things that we didn't get done, things that are kind of eating us up. And, you know, I wish I got that done. I wish I got this done. If I could only, you know, we start telling ourselves this narrative of, um, you know, things that are preventing us from getting where we want. So write those down, right? Let's get those out. Let's get all that stuff out. Let's this, again, this is like talking, you know, getting a, a good reflection of where we're at. All right. And like you said, uh, Ryan, great opportunity to put it down, put it away, come back to it again and see if that's really how you feel about it. Or, you know, um, could it be adjusted? Right. And you're going to get a real true picture of it. And it's very interesting if you do this uh, more than once every 90 days is, is usually the, uh, the goal of it. When you come back to it, where are you now? Right. This is your benchmark. This is, you know, I was here 90 days ago and it's like a reward sometimes when you go back to them and you see, hey, you know, I've really made some progress because again, most contractors, if you ask them what their progress was in the last 90 days, they, they, they can't tell you, right? They might, they might have a few indicators, but overall, this is, a, this is your benchmark. This is where you started from, okay? Um, so drive, so need to change, uh, need to make a difference, right? These are the things that you absolutely need to, um, you know, change in the next 90 days in order to be successful. We want to get those things out. All right. Again, this is going to be your list. Um, and then we can actually start the planning process. We can actually start to take these things, you know, reflect on them and see when and where do they fit in um, to the next 90 day schedule. Okay. So we want to talk about some uh, some takeaways, um, some action steps, communication. All right. Um, this is the beginning formulation. Now you'll notice here, the guys, this is not a complicated plan. All right. We don't want to make things complicated. We want to make things easy. This is also something that you can continuously come back to and use um, as a tool, right? Put it in a binder, put it, you know, staple it, put it together, have it somewhere where, you know, you can, you can work through this. Um, a lot of our, our members have chosen to actually, you know, they use these quite, you know, quite regularly um, and they, you know, they've changed up some of the formats, but they're coming back to it. They're reflecting on it. They're, they're, they're taking actions. They're, you know, they're, they're celebrating their wins, um, you know, and they're getting help on their losses, right? They're getting help in understanding, taking the lessons learned from, you know, what went well, what didn't go well, what am I struggling with? Um, and that's okay, right? Again, it's all about, that's how a good plan comes together. If we're, if we're coming from a good uh, position, um, and we have, you know, uh, a good um, head on our shoulders at the time that we do it. Good plans, you know, that's how they come together. So now we're going to move on <clears throat> to the actual plan, the street plan. All right. So if um, in the chat box here, guys, I have a quick um, quiz. If you had to choose a section of your business, um, time and team, profits and cash flow, um, marketing and sales that you need to focus on over the next 90 days to be successful, what would it be? Okay. Maybe you can just give me, I'm going to put a, a quick thing in here if you want to grab that and we'll, we'll take these votes at the end. I'll show the, the results. Um, but if you guys got a second there, we're going to, we're going to um, vote on this and see what everybody is looking to focus on. Okay. So when we talk about time and team, what's time and team. Okay. Time and team at a 30,000 foot view would be, I need to hire more guys, all right? That's your 30,000 foot view. I need to have six more guys, all right? Um, your 20,000 foot view uh, would be more like, I need to be, you know, I need to hire six trained guys. I need to have an onboarding process. I need to have, um, you know, a recruitment plan. I need to have, um, you know, uh, I want to, I want to create a better culture in my business. Okay. So now we're going to get more granular as we move down through this plan. So the overall objective is to hire more guys or to have better production, more production. And then as we get right down into the 10,000 foot view plan, um, again, these are the things that we're going to take action on it over the next 90 days. Okay. The whole, the whole thing, what can we control now? What can get done in the next 90 days in our time and team? All right. So sometimes this could be um, as simple as, you know, we're going to put some ads up. All right. We're going to get, uh, you know, we're going to get some help with recruitment. Maybe we're going to hire a headhunter. These things become more granular and achievable within the 90 days. Now you can ultimately take the whole objective and try and fit that into 90 days as well. But when you're really trying to build out a whole hiring process and, and uh, recruitment process, you know, we want to give that the right amount of time. So we want to break these things down. We want to really look at <clears throat> what can we get accomplished successfully within 90 days, all right? 
What can we, what actions can we take? Okay. Same now if we're looking at profits and cash flow. So profits and cash flow, maybe we want to, um, you know, implement job costing. We want to have full control at the, the 30,000 foot view is, you know, we have full control and we can see our entire operation and we are financial managers running our businesses, right? Only through financials. So that might be your 30,000 one year view of what you want or three year view, sorry, that you'd want to get accomplished, right? You want to be a financial manager, um, you know, very, um, have all your finances in place or, I mean, maybe you want to have a bigger grander plan is that you want to be out of your business you want to retire um you want to make enough money you can you can exit your business um what we would have to do next at the 12 month range right we're going to have to get control we're going to have to have good sops and and good bookkeeping practices in place um we're going to have to you know have dependable people that are giving us you know quality data that to help us make those decisions um to help drive our uh, our financial decisions at a 10,000 foot view in 90 days, maybe we just want to implement job costing, right? A good successful job costing um, strategy so that we're seeing on a job by job basis, you know, what we're making and how profitable we are. Now, these are just examples. Again, you, you will make up your own. Um, let's go to marketing and sales. Uh, for marketing and sales, I'd say that, you know, maybe a three-year goal is I want to increase my business 10x, right? I want to do, you know, if you're doing a million now, we want to do 30 million in three years. Okay. That might be your 30,000 foot view. And now as we get down into the 12 month, the, the, the 20,000 foot view, you know, we're going to make that a little bit more uh, manageable. So we're going to increase our business this year, you know, three times. Okay. So what would we have to do? What, what are the steps that we would have to do to achieve that goal? And, you know, what would that look like? So we want to, we want to kind of get those ideas out of our head. So what, what would that maybe be that we would have, you know, um, consistent lead flow? We would have, um, maybe we want to run, um, you know, certain type of campaigns, a pay-per-click campaign. We want to be, um, you know, control our sales process. All of these things would contribute. Most likely not going to be achieved in 90 days. I mean, if you, if you really push on them, I'm sure you could. But now as we get into 90 days, I would make it even simpler than that. Um, knowing that we're very busy, I would want to work on, you know, just having my sales process crystal clear, right? What do, how do we take in leads? How do we follow up with leads? How do we, you know, what's our customer journey look like? So that would be more something that, you know, we could get done over the next 90 days and really, really knock it out of the park. All right. So again, guys, these are just suggestions. Um, each one of us have our own unique problems in our business. The idea behind this is that we're looking at key critical areas um, and, you know, we're taking the, those key critical areas and we're really putting some plans to it. We're, pay, we're, we're holding ourselves accountable to some actions and some steps that we're going to take to improve that area. All right. Now, if we go through the next 90 days and we, um, you know, get caught up in the day to day, oh, the day to day that is so easy to do, um, chances are you're not going to achieve some of these, these objectives. All right. We have to, we have to have some accountability. We have to um, implement some, some changes that are going to allow us to actually achieve these things. Okay. So again, when you're looking at this 90 day plan or that, sorry, this, uh, you know, three year plan, um, you know, this is something that you can really drive towards, right? These main objectives. Okay. And the next part of this, again, we want to reflect, um, we want to keep notes. We want to do, um, you know, take our take our action steps that we are, um, you know, going to consider to make on in this um, in this plan. Okay, and the reason we're going to start to reflect on this plan, like we reflected on the last one, all right, is you're going to look at this and again, you know, implement good practice. Maybe you're going to come back to it. Maybe you're going to get some input from your team. You know, is this achievable? What do they see? What's the vision of this company? You know, where could we be in three years? And expect it to change. Okay. It, nothing is, nothing's going to stay absolutely solid, but you'll find after time, you know, um, it becomes a lot easier in terms of getting this information um, and really getting your, uh, if you have teams, if you have people that, uh, that are working for you, sharing these visions with them, you know, giving them the, the outlook of it, giving them some, something to, um, you know, believe in, you know, give them a pathway, give them, you know, the future of this company. Right. Especially when it comes to time and team, you really got to be focused nowadays on, you know, having those pathways, you know, is there a career that you have in your business or is it just a, just a job, right? Are we creating, are we creating an environment where culture can thrive or are we, you know, again, just giving them a job, right? 
these are all things that you can think of and build into your plan as you start to execute and get gain confidence on planning. Okay. So um, <clears throat> next, we're going to look at um, some tactics, some strategies, some things to keep us accountable to making these things happen. Okay. So a lot of times we talk about the things that we want. All right. We express the things we want. We tell people how we, you know, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. Um, and as contractors, we're easily distracted. Uh, sometimes we take on so much and, you know, nothing gets done. All right. Many people have the same frustration that we hear about is, you know, I have all these things in my head. I have all these things I'm trying to work on. Nothing's getting done. I'm not completing things. I'm not getting them done. So let's take the stress away from that. All right. If, if there was one thing that we could do that would um, help us to keep accountable is you know first of all we have a couple of options if you have a team we're going to we're going to start to think about how we're delegating you know how are we passing some of these tasks that are leading to the big goals off to team members right if you have the overall objective all right what tasks now need to go and who needs to do those right what's the timeline what's the you know what's the accountability okay by doing this, again, it's getting these tasks out of your head, getting these, you know, the, getting your team to buy in on it, getting your, you know, if you're, if you're working with a team or you have a management team, or even getting your, your field staff to buy in on it, right? If our goal is to improve quality, for example, all right, great. Well, that's, a, that's an awesome objective. Now, what are the steps and tasks that we're going to do on a daily basis, weekly basis, monthly basis that are going to get us to this goal? And how do we measure it, right? How do we... How do we know that we've we've successfully uh, done this or not? Okay, so a lot of this comes down to just looking at it from the easiest way that you can. We're going to build it into a calendar. We're going to you know we're going to uh, add some hours to it. We're going to keep ourselves and or whoever's doing it accountable. So if you know we only know we can spare an hour or two hours a week, great. What are we doing with that two hours to optimize it? What tasks are we going to do, right? Um, for a lot of people, and I'm, I know I'm this way, um, I get up very, very early. Um, I've got like bad ADD. So I get everything I need to get done for that day between 4.30 and, you know, about eight o'clock. The rest of the day is, you know, more, more reactions and, and just dealing with, you know, the day-to-day -day stuff. But anything important I need to get done, I get done, you know, well before everybody gets up. And I make the plan for the next day of what I'm going to do. All right. What is the what are these main things that I have to focus on? So, again, when I when I say this, I use things like business planning. Right. Um, you know, in, in terms of, you know, maybe I've got a, a difficult SOP to write or I've got a, a decision to make. I will plan that where I have a moment where I can be, again, present. Right. Maybe I have a, a, some other tasks, maybe, you know, taxes, whatever. OK, I'm going to put all those things that would stress me or that would, um, you know, require me to think very hard <laughs> i'm going to put those you know first i'm going to get those done in the morning and i'm going to plan for the next day okay so this might be a strategy you want to use um another one is your calendars how many of you guys are using google calendars google D google docs google sheets right very very easy to put in task and block off time all right block off time to do these things if you've decided, all right, and, and, I'll, and I'll maybe give you guys a hint on the easiest process ever, all right, we, want, we all talk about procedures and uh, maybe you guys have heard SOPs and stuff like that. One of the simplest ones I ever learned um, that I still use to this day is time blocking, all right? You want to you wanna process, you want a procedure, great. You know, if I knew that I had, um, I was working on a project that was going to take me three weeks, four weeks to develop, right? Maybe it's a hiring process, hiring procedure. Um, that one keeps popping into my mind because I, I hear it so often. Um, or an onboarding plan, okay? I'm going to put that in my calendar under a block time, all right? And I'm going to mark it reoccurring for the period of time that I want it. And that time's blocked off. Everybody around me knows that I'm, I'm not available. And that's what I'm doing, all right? So the fact that I've got myself being reminded that this is what I'm supposed to be doing, all right, allows me, it gives myself permission. I don't know what it is, but it, you know, I, I'm able to do it during that time, right? So again, using your calendars, stopping some of the chaos. A lot of times we're answering phone calls we shouldn't be answering. We're, you know, we're allowing ourselves to be distracted or we're just keeping ourselves busy. Um, Think about those times and think about those tasks that we could be getting done, right? 
So this gives you an opportunity here in terms of, you know, writing down these important steps to, you know, achieving whatever goals you're trying to do over the next 90 days, whatever tasks, we want to add those things in now, we want to get those things out, and we're going to add a, a time block to it. Okay. So um, <clears throat> we call it the goal smasher tool. Again, you guys have full access to it. Um, and uh, again, you know, take advantage of these kind of uh, this kind of tool. The other one is the scheduler. So we were just, you know, kind of going through that. We have exactly 24 hours in every single day. All right. What are we doing with those with that time? How are we planning our time? Okay. If we're just running around and responding to catastrophes all day, all right, that, that's going to burn you out really quickly. All right. Are we giving ourselves enough time where we can be effective at what we're doing? Right. A lot of guys, um, if you're especially from the older generation and the Gen Xers and the um, baby boomers, um, we were all taught to work really hard. And if we work really hard, we're going to get somewhere. Right. Um, but that's really simply not true. Okay. Working seven days a week, you know, killing yourself doing all of, you know, the, the things you already know how to do is not going to get you to where you want to be. All right. We have to slow down. You know, we have to, if we want to speed up, we have to slow down. We have to take the time um, to build our business, to work on our business. All right. To, to give it the respect that it deserves. If we find ourselves that we're working in the business constantly. Okay. And you're, you're not able to set aside the time. I mean, four hours a week to work on your business is not a lot to ask, especially for, you know, if you want to grow it, expand it, you know, remove yourself, um, have it one day where you can retire or move, um, you know, move out of operations. All right. If you can't take four hours in your calendar and block it off for planning and for um, working on your business, you're going to have a very hard time with that. Okay. So it's, it's just as much. an a muscle that you need to build. All right. And for most contractors, especially guys that have been on the tools um, or still in the field, still working in the, on the tools, you're going to, you're going to struggle with this a little bit because it's the opposite skill sets that we're used to doing. Right. Try to do it, try to take it from this perspective. Um, ultimately you're, you're, you're in control of your time, right? Nobody else controls your time. Nobody else has the ability to tell you all right, you decide if you're going to do something or not, right? So if we control our time, all right, and we organize and, and plan our time, how much more could we get done? How much happier could we actually be, right? If we allow other people to control our time and we just respond and react um, to, um, you know, outside things and, you know, those will never stop. You'll never, they'll never, ever stop if you don't, you know, block them off from happening. So, I mean, I can promise you, you know, those phone calls from the field and clients and, you know, employees and stuff, if you just let it be open and there's, uh, they can call you anytime they will. All right. Um, so you have to take accountability here and, and make sure that you're protecting your time. You know, to make sure that you're taking, you know, and, and planning your days out so that um, you can be uh, utilized and, and be effective. Right. And we're getting these key things done. One thing we always talk about here at Busy Busy, just internally as a team, is uh, the most important uh, times in the day is the, the first hour and the last hour of your day, typically. Mm. Uh, and it's exactly what you just said. If, if you can, for the first hour of your day, mark out everything that you're going to do that day, mm -hmm. um, take care of those really important tasks, and then that last hour of the day to pause and mark down everything you got done and everything that needs to get done the next day, uh, that that's what differentiates, and, and you're talking about it here, but it's what def differentiates uh, people who are successful, able to get those things done yep. that, that other people just can't seem to find the time for. Right. And, and again, um, we sometimes have to check ourselves. Okay. So mm -hmm. um, especially earlier in my career, um, you know, I, I often told myself a narrative that wasn't true. So I don't have time. I, you know, I've got to do this. I've got to do that. I was constantly telling myself, you know, there's no way I could do that. You, you know, I don't know how these guys do it. Right. Watch out for that. Because I mean, the more you tell yourself that, you know, I don't have time or I can't do this, or if I only had this happen, the more you're setting yourself up for this never to happen. Right. So there's no doubt at the end of the day, um, you know, we are 100% in control of certain things. Um, your time is one of them. Right. And a lot of people don't, don't realize that. They don't, you know, they don't respect that either. And they allow, you know, they allow it to be consumed by things that aren't giving them a result. 
Um, so, you know, here's another way, uh, another reference to this is like the 80 20 rule, right? We spend 80% of our time, um, you know, doing something that is, you know, not getting us results, right? It's not, it's not really, you know, driving the needle. And then we spend, you know, 20% of our time um, doing stuff that gets us 80% of the result. How is that, you know, why don't we just spend 80% of our time doing, you know, the thing that gets us the most, the most amount of results, right? So if we are to apply that logic here, if, if you knew that, you know, getting your, um, your onboarding process in would allow you to hire six new people, right? And it was only going to require you to, you know, commit to four weeks of two hour sessions or one hour session where you sit down and get this stuff, you know, organized or, you know, reach out to, to speak to somebody on it. All right. And you see that get done over four weeks. Okay. I promise you, it's going to build you some serious confidence and that thing is done. All right. We, we now can move forward, but if we go every day, you know, and just, you know, continue to remind ourselves of what we're not doing or why it's not getting done. And, and then you allow ourselves to give the excuse of, well, I just don't have time. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, that's, <laughs> you know, we all have 24 hours, right? We have to focus on the things that are going to make the biggest difference and most impact in our business. And that's what this is really all about. And you can do that very easily over time. And the more you can control the day to day, the easier it is to control the, the one year, two year, three year view, right? Um, you know, I've gotten to the stage in my life where, you know, I, my three year plan is, you know, pretty easy to to see and and to to hit um you know planning out 12 months and then and that becomes contagious as well um so for scheduling your business for guys you know scheduling your work same principles apply right if you're in chaos right now and you can't you can't give a customer a schedule date you really got to look at yourself um first before you look at anywhere else because if you can't manage your time and you're trying to schedule for a client you know that's 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 a skill right we have to learn we have to be accountable to um, a lot of the chaos ends when you can actually start to give, um, you know, scheduled dates for clients, for example. Right. But again, it comes back down to what, what, what good habits have you got in place? Right. Does that make sense? Cool. It's, it's strange. I'm usually, usually uh, used to uh, having interactive where people are talking back and forth. So <laughs> <laughs> it feels like I'm just like screaming at a screen <laughs> anyways. All right. So let's, uh, let's take a moment. Um, let's see what our score results came back at. See if we got anybody to score on us. Oh, we got three time and team. Okay. So we got three votes on time and team. Okay. So let's, Let's maybe take the last few minutes um, here that we have uh, on this thing and let's talk about some strategies around time and team, okay? So it's interesting that we're talking about uh, this planning session and that really does come back down to our time. Um, but we have an opportunity here for you guys that are operating teams um, and uh, you know, thinking about you know, how to make your teams more efficient or productive for next year, right? This has been a big one that's come up or how do we hire more people? How do we have good culture? So maybe I could share some, some, uh, you know, some strategies and tactics that our, our clients are implementing and that I've implemented and that I use um, to uh, really lead from the front. Okay. Um, a lot of times in our businesses, um, you know, we underestimate the power of leadership um, and really, you know, leading or um, inspiring our staff to do a great job and to, to, um, you know, to be productive on sites. Okay. And we, we revert back into this, this, this frame of mind that, um, you know, we need more guys, we need more, you know, we can't find enough staff. Okay. I see this, I deal with this same, um, you know, head or mindset almost on a daily basis. So I want to give you guys maybe some ideas of what you can do um, to immediately start to improve some of this stuff. Okay. So, um, you know, leadership is, essentially, again, you're going to provide a pathway for your team, right? So let's take our calendar, let's take our time, all right? And let's imagine for a second that um, we're going to lay out the next one year um, for our team. They're, you know, we're going to share with them our vision for the next one year, okay? And we're going to ask them to contribute to this vision, all right? And when I ask them to contribute, I want, I want to make sure that um, they feel that this matters. Okay. So having a conversation uh, around, you know, what, what do they want to see? What do they, where do they see themselves in one year? Right. Do they want to be a supervisor? Do they want to be a foreman? Okay. All right. 
we're going to lead this conversation. And, and as long as we've got the initial one year vision out and they can start to, you know, relate to it, start to think about what they can contribute to it. All right. You're going to, you're going to start to lead the conversation. All right. So asking them questions around, um, you know, what do you think we need to do to um, develop a, an onboarding process or develop a, a, a better recruitment strategy? Okay. Let them, let them buy in, let them give you something. All right. Everyone, uh, you know, every human being has some ideas and has, you know, has something that they can contribute. Don't make this a one-way conversation. All right. Don't, don't, don't try and take your vision and just say, this is what we're doing. All right. Um, I often refer to this as the boss mentality, right? We're going to, we're going to bark orders and, and scream go. Um, really nowadays we have to think about how do we share a vision? How do we get people to buy in on our vision and our, um, you know, our, what, where we're, our pathway is, how do we lead them somewhere where, you know, we can celebrate wins. Okay. So again, I'm using a reference here of having that team talk, having that, you know, one year reflection plan where we're saying, Hey, you know what, this whole plan that I've gotten out of my head now, I want to share with you. All right. Here's our wins. Here's our losses. Here's where I'd like to be. All right. Let them to start to fill in some of these blanks. Okay. Don't feel like you have to do it all. If you're working with a team, they should. And, and I promise you, once they buy in on it by giving them one suggestion, one piece of the, you know, the, the puzzle. Okay. Um, it's now your, it's both of your plans. It's not just yours. Okay. And they can believe in it. They can, they can, they can see a pathway. They can see changes. They can see, you know, yes, we're going the right direction. Okay. Too often we don't do this stuff. We as owners, um, we keep everything to ourselves. Um, you know, we're not giving our, our staff or employees, um, you know, the, the, the long-term view, even over one year or 90 days, how most of us aren't even telling them what job they're going to the next day. Right. So, you know, slowing down a little bit and, and sharing this with your team and getting their, their feedback, input, suggestions, okay, allows them to own it, okay? It allows them to be a part of it and have feel like they're having impact when you start to achieve some of these tasks. It also answers one more important question, and that's the what's in it for me, the WIIFM question, okay? If you don't take time to figure that out is what's in it for me, okay? Because every, every human being is like that. Why would they follow you? All right. What what motivation do they have here to help you achieve this goal or ch achieve this vision? Right. So, again, first step is get the vision yourself for where you want to have your business. The second step is to share that vision with your team. OK. And even if you have one or two people, it doesn't matter. Sh share it with whoever is a stakeholder in your business. OK. And by sharing it, it's going to change. Yes. But I promise you. Um, it's going to also connect a lot of the dots and it's going to make it achievable. All right. Share the tasks, the who, the what, the where, why, when, you know, if we're going to win as a team, all right, we want to build that momentum. We want, we want people to be productive and feel rewarded at, and, and engaged at work. Okay. Having this on a board, having this out in the open where everyone can see, you know, where are we headed? What are we doing? Okay, it's going to give you a lot more momentum and, and you're going to have a lot more engagement and engagement is critical nowadays uh, with all staff. Uh, I mean, again, you know how distracting the world is. All right. If they're coming to work and, and they're disengaged, um, you know, one of the things we see a lot of is more accidents, uh, longer hours, uh, a lot less pr productivity, um, massive turnover. I mean, everything is bad when you have disengaged employees. Okay takes no time after you've crafted this plan to share it with your team, get their buy-in and be prepared to change it a little bit. Be, be flexible. How's that? Uh, how's that work for everybody? Let's see again. I can't get any responses. <laughs> I, I yeah. got to learn the webinars a little any, bit better. Yeah. Any questions up to this point? Feel free to even just drop them in the chat. And I, I I love all of this, and I, I think it's it's something that uh, I've even been looking at for, for me is is trying to draw back mm -hmm. uh, to to KPIs, right? So key performance indicators. What's what what can I measure that's that's going to tell me I'm succeeding in in any of these things? So like the other thing I was thinking of is if a company's looking for 
uh, more sales or more revenue? What, what mm -hmm. can we draw back that shows that as success? It's how many leads are we getting in? How many are we closing? Mm -hmm. um, what, what's the, like, how can we increase profit per job? What is our profit per job? How can we up increase right. that? Where it is, I think, uh, almost reverse engineering the the things that are being done that we want to improve and saying, mm -hmm. okay, great. Like, what are what are this like the three things inside of this uh, main goal for the next year that I can measure to tell me at the end of 2023 I I was successful in this. Right. So so that and that's uh, we use at, at PFC and with all of our clients uh, we we implement OKRs, which is a little bit more complicated, like higher level stuff mm -hmm. to this. And what OKRs is objectives and key results. Okay, so if you think of your objective, so our overall objective um, was to you know deliver our service and to reduce retention or, or uh, improve retention. Um, by delivering, you know, what we promised, right? That's mm -hmm. the overall objective for the year, okay? Or for the quarter, sorry. Um, so every three months, the, our CEO comes down, he gives us two objectives. And then from there, each department contributes, you know, their objective and how they're going to support, you know, the master one. And then below that is the key results. Like, how would we measure this is actually happening? How would I know that, you know, we've delivered on this and the whole team, like the, the entire company sees it. I mean, we have 50, 50 staff, I think now, and, you know, everyone from, you know, the lowest to the highest is, is aware of it and we're all bought in. I mean, so again, this stuff is powerful. This is how big teams get built and, and big, um, you know, big, big companies are growing. I mean, uh, the original uh, owners of this particular one is uh, Google. Um, so Google uses OKRs. Um, and again, it, it, you know, we can make it complicated or we can make it simple. Um, we use it with our own, um, you know, PFC coaching clients and they're blown away consistently because it keeps you on track. You know, you've got a due date, you have a key result, you know, you've got a plan in place and it makes it a lot easier to drown out some of the noise because we're being bombarded with it. Right. So we have to, we have to give ourselves that time to, to really plan and reflect and be, you know, be present, you know, for these things, because they're big, they're big decisions, right? And, you know, you, know, you can react or you can, you can plan and, and, and you know, be uh, proactive towards them, right? It's all, mm -hmm. it's all a choice. Yeah, I love it. Mm -hmm. um, one, one question I just saw come in was, uh, so as a, as a company, if I, if I feel like I need to improve time and team sales and marketing, like, like everything could use a step up. Like what, what one should I start on? So, so the way that I would go about it is again, you're looking at a 90 day plan. What would, what would move the needle the most? Okay. Mm -hmm. And we all know this answer. So like, for, for example, would we be working at marketing and um, you know, sales if we, we don't have enough manpower to do any more work? Mm -hmm. Of course not. Right. So, if we have, you know, high turnover and we don't have a dependable workforce, well, we know now we got to be in time and team, right? We've, we've got to really focus on building that team up and getting the morale up so that we can start to think about marketing and sales or, you know, and profits and cash flow. Again, um, you know, what's, we can, we can take it. It's a, it's a three, three-legged step. If you pull one of them out and you know which one it is. So if you, I mean, you've got uh, cash flow problems right now, okay? Well, that's going to have impact on all of your business, right? We've got to get those receivables in. So that's where I would be focusing. If we, you know, we, we got to be able to pay the team, right? We got to be able to, you know, keep our, keep our doors open. So if that's the kind of, you know, pressure that you're under, I would recommend we focus immediately on improving cash flow. The, the, the thing about it is, and you know, the, why we do it in 90 day cycles is because um, again, it, we could actually, you know, go around and, and focus on the whole business by the end of the year, right? But what's the most important area that we can get done? And don't overwhelm yourself because too many times we try to do everything at once. Okay. We want to take and take the 911 things, deal with them first. Okay. Make sure that we're 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 getting stabilized and then start to move out from there. I love it. Uh, another question was uh, looking to sell my company in the next two years, Okay. Uh, what should I do or, or what are a few things I should be doing to best prepare for that, that exit strategy? Well, so <laughs> that's a loaded question. So um, yep. there's two things. Number one um, that I'm going to say from a personal experience is be very prepared, start getting yourself hobbies and get, get 
you think about your life <laughs> after the business. I, I, I'm being yeah. serious. I mean, no, I, I, I love I grew it. my business to the point where it no longer needed me. And, um, you know, it was probably the opposite of what we all believe. Like when you actually have a business that runs itself and, you know, it, everything's good. That day will come when you're no longer needed or if you sell it. And I'm telling you, it's like the worst breakup you've ever had in your life. It's the opposite of like, yes, you can go hang out on the beach and stuff. But if you don't have a plan for after you've gotten rid of this business, you're setting yourself up for a very, very hard drop because you've got so many attachments and so many, um, you know, things you don't even realize, right? Like, think about it. It becomes a thing. It becomes a, you know, you have emotional attachments to certain things in your business. So I would say first prepare yourself. Um, and then in terms of getting a business ready, you know, technically, um, you know, I, you know, I always focus on um, reoccurring revenue. If you can build in some reoccurring revenue, um, very, you know, a lot easier to sell uh, a, anything in the trade business. Um, so, you know, even service contracts, maintenance contracts, stuff like that. If you've got two years, start moving towards that direction um, because p businesses get bought for very few construction businesses ever get bought because that by the time they're done, once the owner's removed, there's nothing there to sell, right? Other than equipment assets, you know, but not too many businesses come in and buy, you know, your potential contracts into the future, right? What they will buy though, um, is CRMs, process procedures, good structure, you know, that you can prove on paper, you're profitable. Um, but the big, the guys that have really cashed out um, are the guys that have reoccurring revenue, you know, the ones that have maintenance contracts, those are the companies that are getting bought up by hedge funds, like 10 X their value. Um, and that's where you want to be in terms of building real, like, you know, if you want to walk away clear and, you know, be out of the business, you know, that's a, that's a good place to think. And that's something that you can implement on every single job um, that you're doing. We did it in our business and it's still silly. It was a $50, you know, maintenance contract that we sold with our roofs and it's, you know, it 10x the value of the business. So, I mean, that's, that's where I would give my, my recommendation. Yeah. And it's actually, I, I'm, I'm glad this question came up. It's perfect timing. I, I was down at a trade show and actually talked to an investment banker there. And, and it was along those lines of like companies come to him when they're ready to sell. And, and typically the biggest issue he sees, it's a lot of what you just talked to is it's structure. Yeah. Uh, the issue is that it like, and like we've talked about before is everything's in the, the owner's head. There's no structure. Um, right. and, and one of the things we were talking about was even just busy, busy and how, uh, like, like you said, if you can't pull out every project for the last two years, at least and say, mm -hmm. here's exactly how much we made, here's what we've done here, are all the projects we did, uh, where, where he was talking about just he wanted to, to actively recommend busy, busy to people coming to him saying, Hey, I think I may want to sell my business in a few years. Just saying, okay, great. Use this. Uh, because if you don't have this, if you can't pull up and show every project for the last two years, uh, and like you kind of said here is, uh, that multiple or, or how much you can sell your company for is going to go from a, a 10 times or to a five times. Right. Uh, and he sees that every day where, where it's, every day. it's hugely important. And it, and not only, uh, I think not only for, for companies selling, but even just for companies saying, hey, we want to grow. Like like you said, we want to take it from mm -hmm. a million to five. Uh, you can't, it's something we always talk about here is you can't improve what you don't measure. That's right. And so uh, again- You can't manage uh, what you can't measure either. Yeah, exactly. Where we're getting, getting structure and, and looking at what technologies can I use like mm -hmm. Busy Busy? Um, what, what project management software, estimating software, like what can I do so that, my employees, I mean, I was talking to a, an estimator the other day. Uh, she was so happy that we, they had busy, busy because uh, she was also running payroll and it would take her a full day to run payroll where now she's like, yeah, I can do it in 45 minutes and I can do it from anywhere. That's, uh, it, it, it's, it's huge. It's so funny because we use busy, busy and that's mm -hmm. the same thing. Like I use it in my own business um, and you know, that's, that's the same feedback we've gotten. Um, and again, you know, you look for tech things that give you the advantage. We're getting more and more into the world of uh, Amazon experience, right? So we can apply tech, all right? And I know that's an ugly word with contractors. In a lot of cases, most contractors are about 25 years behind um, what's, you know, what, what the rest of the world is at. Um, so not to overwhelm anyone, but we're really getting to the time where the customer base is changing. Um, the employment, you know, anyone that's had to deal with millennials, okay? We talk a lot about this is, you know, customers, when they've become the millennial buyers have moved to 
um, you know, convenience, speed and convenience. It's no longer, you know, baby boomers needed to build relationships and stuff. We're, we're seeing it in my own business where things are moving faster, right? Mm -hmm. Customers are buying major purchases, $120,000 roofs without ever meeting us. And we're sending out quotes, you know, um, with, you know, through the internet, essentially. Right. Um, so, I mean, that is the way we're going, no doubt about it. And there's some time to still adjust and to still implement these things and w- where you have to really kind of, um, you know, to, to really take advantage of this stuff is that you have to have to, first of all, recognize the change, right? You have to see it. Um, you know, a lot of guys will, will say things like, you know, I can't get millennials. The millennials don't want to work. They don't want to do this. They want to do that. Yeah, you, you're right. They don't, right? They, they want to have tech, right? If I brought a millennial in and we're still doing paper and pen, I mean, half of them probably don't even know how to write. So again, <laughs> you, no, but I'm, yeah. I'm being very serious. Like they yeah. expect a tech like yeah. experience, right? They and expect it, it, those things. We, we see it all the time at this right. point where guys, guys, one of the, the, the ways we get companies to, to come into busy busy the most is referrals is yep. they leave a company go to a company using paper and say no no no, no I'm, I'm not doing this check this out and then yep. that's that that's where they say oh, okay we get it now Let, mm-hmm. let's jump on board right and, and again you think of the new worker that's coming in you know there's what we see in in you know our customers and what i've seen in my own business is that you know we have very limited time now to prepare for that millennial workforce that's coming into play um, and it's not a it's not a novelty anymore, right? And you got to think about it the other way. If if I'm running my business completely efficient and I'm vertical, I mean, I can have, you know, my accounting done in the Philippines. I can have, you know, my my call intake done in South America, and my cost is, you know, a fraction of yours. All right, and I'm using all of this tech that is available to me. All right, so I mean, recruitment, you know, you name it, we can we can automate it nowadays. And you haven't, I'm coming up against you, you know, I, I promise you, you're going to be the prey. You're not, you know, you're not going to be the predator in the situation. Right. And you know, more and more of that kind of stuff is occurring. And, you know, it's the best time um, to really, you know, really uh, take advantage of it and seize it. Right. Because yeah. the next wave um, is these baby boomers selling their businesses as well. Right. You, you know, the timing of that is going to be catastrophic because everyone's going to be looking to sell at the same time good for um you know certain parts of the the industry but again how are you going to differentiate yourself if you are selling your business um you know amongst all these other businesses that are selling themselves if you don't have that tech side to it and you can't manage you can't produce financials you can't like forget it right it'll be it 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 will not it will not go well yeah agreed and 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 I, I just dropped a, a link in the chat for everyone uh, that will give you the ability to have a conversation with uh, someone from Profit for Contractors, especially, uh, just do a little plug here, especially with everyone saying, or, or the three people here saying time and team. Uh, one cool thing that, that these guys are doing right now is is helping companies create a, a process to generate new leads for hiring new employees. So helping you create the entire process of creating that funnel of constantly getting new uh, applications for uh, your company and automating that so you don't have to worry about it. Um, So if it's something that makes sense, please hit that link, check these guys out. Um, Anything else from you, Jay, before we we finish up here? Just uh, thanks for uh, you know uh, giving allow me to uh, share our share our content and uh, you know hope that everyone's leaving with something one thing at least that they they can take away from this um, and you know it's uh, it's a good time of year to be planning. Absolutely, um, and everyone, if you haven't hit uh, kind of near up the top on the chat is that that Google Drive link with the PDF. If you want to grab that, uh, grab it really quick. Um, and other than that, we're going we're gonna to bounce off. Jay, thanks for being here. And we'll see yeah. you guys on the next uh, Profit for Contractors webinar with Busy Busy. Thanks for having me. Okay, see you all. Bye.